let's talk about the festival that's setting the internet on fire. Sick New World. The ultimate new metal festival. If you looked at the lineup of when we were young and you said, that looks pretty cool, but I wish that instead of wearing those stripy fingerless gloves with Jack Skellington and instead of having blue hair, I wish that I had an eyebrow piercing and trip pants and a fishnet shirt like Dez in the cold chamber video, then this festival is for you. I believe that it may be the ultimate new metal festival my first thought was they definitely missed an opportunity by uh, not calling it sick new world like nu world definitely missed opportunity there also i feel like this font makes me think of uh this font makes me think of like your aunt who's into like witchy wicca stuff and buys weird gothic candles and like before you like eat dinner with her she has to like say some prayer to her weird hippie god to like banish the bad vibes or something like that so that threw me off a little bit but other than that i feel like uh they have delivered if their goal was to make the ultimate new metal festival i feel like they have delivered on that so let's look at the lineup but first i'd like to thank factor for sponsoring this video Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. It's clean eating made easy. I love Factor for when I am too busy to cook, which is always, but they also help me stay on top of my nutritional goals, which is super important to me. I really like that they have offerings like Keto, Protein Plus, and Calorie Smart, which will really come in handy during the holidays. With Factor, you can eat well, but guilt-free. And also, it is way, way cheaper than eating out. Have you seen how expensive restaurants are these days? It is insane. So get with Factor and put the money that you save towards some holiday fun. For me personally, it's a great solution because I work a lot and honestly, I just kind of hate cooking. So I love them when it's time for lunch. I can just run downstairs, grab something from the fridge, heat it up, and I'm good to go. And honestly, they taste great. I sincerely enjoy eating these. So if you want to check it out, head to go.factor.com. 75.com slash fin60 or hit the link in the description and use code fin60 to get 60% off your first factor box. Once again, that is go.factor75.com slash fin60 and use code fin60 to get 60% off your first factor box or hit the link in the description of this video. So let's look at the lineup. Well, first of all, it's in Las Vegas. I don't know if it's put on by the same people who did when we were young, but it does seem like Las Vegas has become the home for this, which I'll talk about in a minute. But here's the lineup. It is headlined by System of a Down. Next level down, we've got Corn, Deftones, and Incubus. My first thought when I saw this is like, wow, this festival is amazing. 2003 was incredible. It's too bad that they don't put on festivals like this anymore. And then I said, oh, wait a minute. That's not 2003, that's 2023. You wouldn't know it from looking at the headliners, but once we get down from there, we've got Evanescence, Turnstile, Chevelle, Sisters of Mercy, then Papa Roach, Death Grips, Flyleaf with Lacey Sturm. I did not know that Flyleaf ever was not with Lacey Sturm, but apparently, apparently that's the case, and uh, apparently they're back with her. I didn't know that. Um, but there we go. And Mr. Bungle. Oh, it's the same people as when we were young. I posted it and the when we were young fest and sick new world fest. Both the enemy to take it down so they could be the first to announce it. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. So whoever's putting these together, they know how to capitalize on 30 year olds on 30 something people with, uh, <laughs> with a lot of nostalgia and some disposable income. We've also got Ville Vallo, which is the singer of him. Kim is not a band anymore, I guess, but he's doing a solo thing. Placebo, 100 Gex. 100 Gex is kind of an interesting one. I feel like there's a few bands in this lineup that kind of make me scratch my head a little bit. Death Grips is one. Um, they they kind of make sense, but 100 Gex definitely feels like the, uh, the odd band out here. I'm guessing everyone's familiar with them. If you're not, they're very weird, uh, postmodern Gen Z hyper pop type stuff that, uh, I'm going to guess that the average Papa Roach, uh, or Korn fan in 2023, probably not here <laughs> for 100 Gex, but who knows? Skinny Puppy and Ministry. 
uh, to, you know, legends of 80s industrial. Although I got to say, the new ministry stuff, can we just pause for one second to talk about how just absolutely awful ministry is now? Just unbelievably bad. I mean, look at this shit. This is what ministry is doing now. They went from just one fix and uh, Jesus built my hot rod to this. I mean, I wish that this was some sort of ironic joke, um, but unfortunately, this is not a joke. This is uh, your weird uncle's band at the open mic playing uh, this song about um, about George Bush. They probably don't even know that Biden is president. They're still complaining about George Bush. Sad stuff. Anyway, also got She Wants Revenge. I had no idea they were still a band. Cold Chamber is apparently back. We've got KMFDM, Killing Joke. Spirit Box, nice to see them on here. I would like to see them a little bit higher personally, but nice to see them at least on the flyer. These are the kind of placements they deserve. Also got Kitty. Now look, with all due respect to the ladies in Kitty, uh, I think Kitty's a cool band, but how is Spirit Box on the same level as Kitty in 2023? I mean, that just, uh, I have a lot of things to say about the nostalgia thing, but like this is an example of everything that is wrong with Rock. Again, the ladies in Kitty seem like really cool people, but the fact that Kitty would be on equal billing as Spirit Box in 2023 is sad to me. Soulfly, POD. POD should definitely be higher. The, uh, death Grips above POD. Are you fucking kidding me? I want my money back. I haven't even bought a ticket yet and I still want my money back. I am insulted on behalf of my boys in POD. How dare you put Death Grips ahead of them? I am actually kind of baffled at how high death grips is on the lineup that seems very strange to me also seven dust hoobastank alien ant farm uh you know solid like c tier new metal bands uh london after midnight don't know who that is fever 333 health machine girl horror prayers filter lacuna coil melvins i'll tell you how old i am and how old the melvins are i saw the melvins in 1990 that is how fucking old i am failure stabbing westward that's a little bit of an odd one cold i've told this story before but my friend and i were walking around in downtown la about 10 years ago and we found a cold gold record just in a fucking alley in downtown la and uh we thought about keeping it but we're like i don't want to drag that thing around all night let's just leave it in the alley cradle of filth that's an interesting one body count the birthday massacre 69 eyes orgy glad to see orgy back in action i guess monster magnet my life of the throw code cult Loathe, another new band, Panchico, Scene Queen, Super Heaven, Fiddlehead, Narrowhead, and Scowl. So there it is. Um, you know, if you thought to yourself, man, when we were young is cool, but what if it was shitty new metal bands instead of cool emo bands? You would get your wish with this flyer. Um, I have a few thoughts. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Unlike most of the bands on When We Were Young, who I would say are still pretty good. Overall, I feel like those bands are still good. To me, other than maybe Korn and I guess Deftones, almost all these bands are just so washed up that um, to me personally, I don't get it. I mean, I know that people are still just fixated on this era like you know, my audience and everyone else in the world of rock seems to just still not be able to get over new metal, but I don't get it. Like, do you really think they're going to see Chevelle or KMFDM in 2023? Like you, you, you're going to travel, you're going to pay hundreds or thousands of dollars to travel for that. And system of down. I mean, you guys know, I'm not a huge system of down fan, but even if you like them a lot, you know, they haven't put out an album in 17 years and they're headlining this giant festival so this just says a lot about the state of rock that people are losing their shit over this lineup of a bunch of bands that for one a lot of these bands play the same festivals every year anyway you know corn and evanescence and papa roach uh and deftones play festivals all the time i mean i know it's been a while since system of down you know did something like this but to me uh, i just i don't really get why people are so excited about this i mean i guess i do get it I do get it because new metal is the last time that metal was this big in the mainstream. You know, metal core did pretty well in the mid to late 2000s, but new metal was the last time that metal was just like absolutely huge, you know, on a mainstream level. And I think, you know, for people in their 30s now, 
this is what you were into when you were in sixth or seventh grade, right? When you sort of formed a lot of your musical opinions. So I guess I have a couple thoughts on this. Um, number one, it just goes to show that the nostalgia market is here. You know, I used to make fun of when I was a kid, you know, there was all those like compilations of, uh, well, I'll, I'll play one. I've talked about this before, but I'll play it again. I used to make fun of this when I was a kid. This is the Freedom Rock commercial about all the hippie boomer, you know, anthems. Turn it up, man. Hey, man, remember the good old days? You know, war, protest. Going to jail. Well, man, we found this new album called Freedom Rock. Remember the good old days? I remember thinking that this was just the corniest fucking thing in the world when I was a kid. This came out maybe in like 1989 or 90, which was 20 years after these songs were sort of at their original peak. And if you think about it, that's the same interval now. Now we're 20 years after new metal. And uh, the fact of the matter is that now you are the boomers that everyone is exploiting uh, for your nostalgia dollars. That's just how it is. Now, I hope that everybody who wants to see this gets a chance to go. And I hope that you have a good time. And I'm not putting it down. I'm not trying to rain on anyone's parade. But I've said it before and I'm going to keep saying it. Like, I think it's unfortunate and sad that this is where the rock world's collective consciousness is, is that they would rather go see Deftones and Incubus in 2023 than Spirit Box and, you know, 100 Gex and Turnstile. I think it's just kind of unfortunate. And again, I've talked about this before, but you look at rap or pop and you'll see that there's a lot more new artists at the top of these festivals. And there's nothing wrong with nostalgia, but it's like, if we can't let go of fucking 2002 to 2005, where is the opportunity for younger artists to develop? You know, I don't know how many times I need to keep saying this. It just is what it is. But if that's what people want, then, you know, I understand why the festival owners have put this on because this is basically guaranteed to sell out. It's easy money. Why wouldn't they do it? My hope is that after this, we can get, instead of when we were young, we'll get when we were butt rock headlined by Puddle of Mud, Creed, Nickelback, and the reunion of Edema. That's my hope. So we can go there and see just as far as the eye can see, faux hawks, bedazzled affliction boot cut jeans, American fighter shirts, um, ri leather wrist cuffs. Now that's the show I would pay for. I would pay a million dollars to see when we were butt rock. I'll be there all day long, rocking out side stage to uh, three doors down. That's for me. There hasn't been a quality rock act since the early 2000s. Well, I don't think that's true at all. I think there's lots of good rock artists. I think that rock rock fans just don't like them. You know, I mean, I've talked about this before, but um, the people who say that there's no good rock now either aren't paying attention or they are still just sort of stuck in the past and they refuse to accept it because there's tons of great new rock artists coming out. There's tons of them. So I, I don't agree with that. But either way... You know, it is what it is. People seem very excited about this. And uh, at the very least, we proved that when we were young, they proved that you can do this logistically. Because remember, when When We Were Young was announced, everyone was quick to say this is going to be fire fest. This is going to be, you know, a disaster. It's a scam. Well, I don't think anybody's saying that about this because they proved that you can do it. With the exception of that first day, when we were young, went off without a hitch. So there it is. Sick new world. Again, it's not too late, guys. Change the name to Sick New World, NU World, and I think you'll be glad that you did. But, uh, you know, there it is. That is the lineup for Sick New World. If nothing else, this festival is probably nice for the smaller and newer bands on the lineup. I guess, but, I mean, is anyone going to go to this to see Scene Queen and Loathe? You know what I mean? Uh, and the smaller bands, or like Lacuna Coil, I mean... Look, Lacuna Coil is cool, but I mean, they've been around for like 20, 25 years too. Can we not just have a festival with newer bands on it? Is that too much to ask for? Like, why do we always have to appease the rock boomers? It's almost like, uh, you know, when you have to give your dog its medicine and you like wrap it in a hamburger to trick him into eating his like fucking thyroid pill or whatever. It's almost like that's what we have to do with these rock people is like in order to get them to maybe pay a little bit of attention to Spirit Box. Like, oh, but look, here's Cold Chamber and Papa Roach as like the hamburger to make them begrudgingly pay attention to a band that's not fucking 20 years old. I don't get it. It's frustrating. But anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say about this. Uh, I hope people like it and, you know, 
That's all I have to say about it.